Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. So at last you've seen one of them, these people you call they. Yes, but not his face. No, 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 don't try to sit up. Uh, I'm thirsty. Get a glass of water, Doc. Water coming right up. Just lie still and keep covered up. Where am I? Don't you recognize your own bedroom? Oh, oh, yes. You're sure you do? Yes, it's my bedroom. I always hated it. Why? Because when I was little... Grandma punished me by locking me in here. I was afraid. Why? There were pictures on the wall. Pictures of Humpty Dumpty and Simple Simon and Peter Piper and a lot more. You mean the wall was papered with Mother Goose characters? Yes. And they wouldn't stop looking at me. Even when I shut my eyes, they were still there looking at me, laughing, laughing. That was when you were a very little girl? Mm, Yes. Here you are, Jack. Couldn't find a glass. All right. (laughs) No, let me raise you up. All right. There. Go ahead. Thank you. Better? Yes. Now then, you say you didn't see him. That is, his face. No. They, they're they very clever. Was his face covered? No. It just wasn't there. Wasn't there? He had a kind of hood over his head. It was all kind of blank and dark inside the hood. Doggone. Describe what you did see. Oh, do I have to? Please. Well, the hood, and then kind of a short smock, you know, big and full. I think it was made of satin. What color was it? Red. Red, like when you stick your finger and the blood comes out. Hey, Cherry, are you telling the truth? Yes, I am. I am. And what about his trousers? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember whether he had legs or not. You don't remember whether he had legs or not? No. And yet he picked you up and carried you down to the furnace room, so he must have had legs. Yeah, I guess he must. How did he get here in your bedroom in the first place? He he, he just opened the door and walked in. Well, why didn't you scream? I was too scared. And then he put a gag in my mouth. Didn't you fight him? Oh, I couldn't move. You just laid there and let him let him gag you and hog tie you? Yes, I couldn't move. And all the time, Reggie, Reggie was out there patrolling the hall. Well, how come he didn't see you when old No-Face picked you up and carried you out? I don't know. He kept my face pressed against his chest hard, so I couldn't see a thing. I thought I was going to smother. And then he carried you down to the furnace room. Yes. And then he turned on the furnace full blast. Yes. Why? What do you think he intended to do? Oh, I know what he was going to do. Well, then why didn't he do it? Because just then the baby began to cry... Yes, the baby. Yes, the baby cried, and and that's the last I saw of him. You didn't see which way he went? No. He was there, and and then he was gone. And the next you knew, we were beside you. Yes. Well, son, it looks like we got to set our traps for a feller in a red smock and no face. Yes. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Where's Grandma and the girls? Down the library. Reggie's staying with them. Why? Reasons of my own. You... You haven't done a very good job here, have you? Well, what do you mean? Since you came, the chauffeur was killed. And now Job is dead. That's right. And then this happened to me. Uh-huh. You'd rather have someone else? No. You couldn't help it. Nobody could. You think this reign of terror is going to continue? It's got to. It can't stop now. It's got to go on and on and on until there isn't any of us left. Nobody but Grandma. You mean you think you and Hope and Faye's going to be killed? Yes, I know. You say you know. Do you actually, or is it just your belief? It's the same thing. I haven't been wrong about anything I said was going to happen. That's right, Jack. She kept saying over and over that Job was in a bad spot. And Hope. 
She's in the worst danger right now. Oh, what about Faye? I don't care about Faye. She doesn't like me. And I don't like her. But she's going to die, too. Yes, but I don't care about that. Job was the one who bothered me most. And next to Job, you like Hope the most? Yes. Cherry, do you know a girl named Pauline West? Pauline West? Yes. Do you? Why do you ask that? Just answer. Do you or don't you? I guess I've heard the name somewhere. Sounds familiar. She's a radio actress. Now, do you recognize her? I... No, I don't think so. What the heck's a radio actress named Pauline West got to do with this, Jack? I don't know. But I found several casting sheets down in the furnace room made out in her name. He found what? Casting sheets. What's a casting sheet? It's a form sent out to actors and artists who've been cast on a show. It tells the time of rehearsal, the date and hour of the show, and the amount of money the performance pays. Okay, so you found a casting sheet for Pauline West, and I still want to know what that's got to do with all the rough stuff that's going on here. Probably nothing. Simply a new name in the picture. And if there's a Pauline West connected with this house, I want to know it. Well, wouldn't Cherry know it if there was? It seems likely. But I'd still like to know what that casting sheet was doing in the furnace room. You must not be a very good actress. I never heard of her before. Oh, you listen to radio shows? Of course I do. Well, anyway, all of them, it's got girls on them. What you think I just bought a battery set to carry around with me for? <laughs> in love with all the women on the air. Huh? And boy, is there a couple of them that I'd like to write dialogue for. Would I? You're darn right. The words I'd put in those babies' mouths would make the radio sensors turn over in their graves. What do you know about radio sensors? Nothing. Then what are you talking about? Okay. Hey. Hey, Jack, look. Cherry. Cherry, you little fool, come back here. What's the matter with you? Where do you think you're going? No, please. Well, come back here and get into bed. Pull the covers back, Doc. Yeah. There. Now get into that bed. Uh, I, I wasn't going anywhere. And what do you mean, trying to sneak out on us? No, I wasn't. I just don't like this room. Well, would you like us to move you downstairs? Jack. Jack, where are you? Hey, that's Reggie. Up in Cherry's room, Reggie. Something's happened. I knew it. Jack. Jack, Hope's got away. Hope's got away? Why, she snapped off the light in the library downstairs and was out the door and gone before I could get it back on. Probably on her way down to an employment agency to get herself a new chauffeur. Now, never mind that, Doc. Where are Faye and her grandmother? I locked them in the powder room just off the hall while I came up to tell you. Are they all right there? Well, they can't get out. Good. Doc. Yeah? You stay here with Cherry. I'm going with Reggie. Okay. Don't let her out of your sight for a minute. You hear that, Cherry, honey? Come on, Reggie. Do you think Hope left the house? No, I think she went towards the furnace. Furnace room? Did he say furnace room? That's what he said. That Hope was heading for the furnace room. But she mustn't. She mustn't. Why not? Because that's where things happen to people. Things happen to folks in the furnace yes, room? Yes, go tell them. Go tell them quick. Hey, you mean that? Yes. Don't you understand? Go tell them to keep Hope away from there. Well, I don't know. Jack said to stay here with you. Oh, hurry, hurry. You promise to stay right there in bed? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll leave the door open. No, no. No, hurry, hurry. Poor little Hope. Poor little sister Hope. Hurry, hurry. Okay, Cherry, get back into bed. No. Now, come on. Get back into bed where you belong. But you didn't go. You didn't go. No, but just waited outside the door to... See what was uh, why you were so anxious for me to leave. But I was just going to help find a hope. Well, Jack and Reggie's pretty good at that sort of thing. Yes, but, but I know, I think I know where she is. Well, if she's in this house, they'll find her. But she's in such danger. They've got to hurry. Now look, you Cherry. How could you know that? But I do. I do. Hey, shut up. What's the matter? There's somebody out in the hall. Oh, no. Oh, listen. It's them. They've come back. Maybe. But it is. I know it. I hope so. I ain't never seen a fella with no face and a red oh, smile. Could I get under the bed, please? You stay right where you are. Listen. They're right beside the door. I can feel them. Somebody out there, okay? Have you got a gun? No. Oh, please, let me get under the bed. No. Where are you going? I'm going to sneak over the door. Maybe I can jump. Oh, no. That's what they're waiting for. Lay still and keep quiet. Hmm. That's funny. What's the matter? Wasn't nobody out there at all. Yes, there was. I know there was. Not when I got there. I know what's the matter. You're giving me the jumps. You got me seeing things that ain't there, too. I tell you, there was Hello, some... Hello, oh, Hope. That's right. Hello, Texas. Well, hey, Hope. Everybody in this house is looking for you. Now, that's silly. What'd you dodge out of the library for? I had to see Cherry. My little sister, Cherry. Oh, I'm so glad you came. I was so scared for you. Sisterly devotion, huh? Yes. I love you so. <laughs> she loves me so. Now, isn't that sweet? Oh, Hope. 
Don't say that. You and Job, you two are all in the world I've got to love. And now you haven't got Job. But i still got you. No, you haven't. Oh, oh, please. No, you haven't got me, not any of me. Then why are you coming over here to the bed? Go away if you don't love me. I want to show you something. What? What do you mean? Look what I found. The gun, the gun. That's right, the gun that killed Joe. Hey, what'd you say? Give it to me, Jerry. Stop, let go of it. Hey, hey, don't do that. Give it to me, You bet I won't give it to you. You shot her. He shot home. Oh. Poor little sister home. My poor little sister. transcribed adventures of Jack Duck and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. <laughs>